I think we have this week and next week, we're going to be wrapping this up. And um, I think this has been one of the most crucial teachings I think we've, we've gotten into over the last, uh, over the last year or so. Last year or so, <clears throat> as we've been talking about relationships, uh, we're talking about sexuality, uh, talking about what God's plan is for all of that. And uh, as we said from the outset of, of digging into this, uh, listen, we can all pretend like we sit in this room and like we're, you know, we're perfect uh, little creatures and perfect little Christians and, you know, we're just so sanctified that we don't ever think about things like sex and relationships and all this. But we could, we could say that, but we would all be lying. Amen? It is a huge part of all of our lives. Uh, who we choose to spend our lives with, how we choose to express those God-created uh, sexual and romantic and love feelings and, and play those, uh, see those expressions played out uh, with God's best intention in mind through a, through a loving marriage between husband and wife. How we do that re- literally creates the framework for such a huge thing of all of our lives, and yet so often in church is something that we don't talk about. And it's amazing that we don't talk about it because the Bible actually has a lot to say about it. Amen? And so we've been talking about that. And, and last week we talked about we talked about a lot about sex specifically and God's design and God's creation in sex. And, and we ended with this thought that I just want to remind us again today. And we, and we thought about this last week. We talked about the fact that what I choose To keep in the dark, I'm empowering when I refuse to expose it to the light. Amen? And when it comes to the area of any kind of sexual addiction or sexual shame or sexual sin, there is always, there there seems to carry with it so much shame and so much guilt and so much condemnation about it. And I believe the reason for that is because we try to keep that thing in the dark. And what 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 I refuse to expose to the light, I am empowering in the dark. And so I beg, I beg, I plead, I do anything I can to encourage you. If that is a struggle, if that is an area in your life where you are struggling emotionally, relationally, you have to bring that thing to the light of Jesus and let the gospel of Jesus Christ minister that area of your life. And what you'll find is that when you bring it to the light, it loses its power. Amen? Amen. And so today that was goal two. Goal two was, uh, was whatever goal two was. I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. But we're going to be on goal three. Goal three today is this. I will experience God's best in my relationship. Say it again. Say it with me. I will experience God's best in my relationships. Say it again. I will experience God's best in my relationships. James chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Let's read this. This, this is not going to sound like it fits to this in a second, but I'm going I'm to I'm tie it together here in just a second. James chapter 1, verse 14 and 15 says, Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. I want to read that all again. Verse 14, James chapter 1, talking about the nature of temptation, explaining how it works. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. And these desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for your, for your presence with us this morning. I ask your Holy Spirit to anoint every word that I say to be exactly the word that you want it to be. And Lord, I ask that you would quicken our ears, quicken our hearts, quicken our minds, Father, so that we could hear everything that, we, that you have brought us here into this moment, to this time, to hear today, Lord. And I pray that, God, we will receive it with gladness, God. We will receive it with an open heart, Father. And I pray, God, that we will go beyond just hearing some lessons or some ideas or some wisdom. But, Lord, I pray that we will truly have an encounter with you, the person of Jesus Christ, as we look at your word together today as a family. In Jesus' precious name, everybody said, amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. Uh, little Troy, come up here real quick. Little Troy, Spencer, would you mind helping me out real quick? Spencer, uh, Little Troy, and, uh, and uh, I, it, Alan, you're, I, Isaiah, it's Isaiah, right? Isaiah, Isaac? Israel, sorry. I, I, get, I know I, you got a bunch of them. I get them confused. Israel, come here. Come here, Israel. Will you help me real quick? Israel, and uh, I, need, I need one more, I need one more, yeah, Braxton, come up here real quick, Braxton, I was hoping you'd be back there, I was thinking, come here real quick, come here real quick, okay, I want you guys to stand right up here with me real quick, <clears throat> and I want, uh, I want, I want, uh, I want Israel, or Israel, right, yeah, Israel and Braxton, I want you guys to get right here in the middle, I want you guys to get right here in the middle, and I want you guys to all four hold hands, how many remember that game, how many remember that game Red Rover, remember Red Rover when you were a kid? How'd it go? Red Rover, Red Rover. You have to, you have a line of the guys standing up against you. Say Red Rover, Red Rover. Send whoever over. Right? Did you guys ever play that in 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 
uh, elementary school. I think that game got banned from my elementary school at some point. They don't play it a lot anymore because, man, that was a savage. That was a savage game back in the day because the goal was, of course, to you would call somebody. If your name got called from the other side, your goal was to run as hard as you can. No pads, nothing like that. Just run, and your goal was to run through this line and see if you could and see if you could break the line. Now, if I'm on the other side, if let's pretend we're on the other side, and this is our Red Rover line, and let's pretend that they call out Red Rover, Red Rover over send Justin over where do you think I might try to attack that line at where would where would be the most logical place to try to attack right I would probably try to attack right here at what now I'm not don't take any offense at this guys but what would appear to be probably the weakest area of this chain the, the best chance that that's where we should probably attack right that's where I would attack and here's the thing listen to me close now relationships, sexuality, listen, it is a common area of weakness for every single person, for every, for all of us, whether it be, whether it be through sexuality, whether it be through sexual addiction, whether it be through getting our lives and our minds and our hearts and our emotions all jacked up through relationship after relationship after relationship that none of them were God designed. Listen, it is an area of weakness that all of humanity is subject to and your enemy, the enemy of your soul, Satan, the devil, he has observed humanity throughout the eons and he has recognized that if, if, if our lives were like Red Rover he has recognized that in the area of sexuality and relationships there is an easy target for him to attack that's why there is constant attack there right. amen you say well, I don't know if that's true listen that you can from King David all the way to Bill Clinton, and you could insert any other famous name of any other famous scandal you know about, we can see that, guys, this is an area that the enemy is constantly sending attack to because it's a weak area. It's an area that we discover and find weakness in. Okay, and you guys can sit down, but I'm going to call you guys back up here in just a minute, so don't, don't go too far. Now, listen, here's the thing. Here's what I want you to understand, okay? And before we, before we you don't have to sit on the front of me, but just, you know, I'm going to call you back. <clears throat> I'm going to call you back in 90 minutes when I'm done. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to be done in 90 minutes. I'm going to be done way after. No, no, it's not going to take me that long. Listen, listen, listen. Before we go any further, and the reason I read James chapter 1 to you is so we can understand this, okay? Because I don't want any of us to leave out of here or in this series or, or, or have our talk together with, with, this, with this thought not being clearly defined and clearly stated. Listen to me close, guys. Being tempted is not a sin. Amen? I'm going to say that again. Just because you are tempted in an area where you are weak does not mean that you have sinned. What it means is that, is that we have identified an area of weakness where you are vulnerable, but just because you are tempted does not mean you have sinned. Amen? Being tempted is not a sin. Acting on it is. Okay? Sin doesn't happen until I give in and until I act on the temptation. Amen? This is, th let's read this again. James chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions. It doesn't say that the desire is sin. It doesn't say that the temptation is sin. It says that the desire, the temptation, gives birth to sin. And when that sin is allowed to grow, when I give in to it, then that sin gives birth to death. But being tempted is not a sin acting on it is. And so here's the thing. God, in all of his wisdom and knowing you and I better than we could ever possibly know ourselves, God recognizes just as the enemy has, God recognizes, recognizes that that is a weak area that is an easy target, that is an easy area of temptation and weakness for almost all of humanity. And so that's why over and over and over again, God has encouraged us through the scripture to be careful in those areas. I want you to put these different scriptures on the screen because I don't want to take the time to turn to them. Just here's a few from that scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. The Bible says, run from sexual sin. No other sin clearly affects the body as this one does, for sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 7 in the Old Testament Promise me, O women of Jerusalem, by the gazelles and the wild deer, not to awaken love until the time is right. What's it saying? It's saying don't get, don't get involved in a romantic relationship until the time is right in your life. Don't awaken love. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says this. Guard your heart 
above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, we looked at this last week, says, give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are moral. Other translations of that say, say, keep the marriage bed pure. Remain faithful to marriage in one another. Keep the marriage bed pure. What is all of that saying? Here's what all that is saying. God is saying to all of it, and I could keep going on for the rest of our time together with different scriptures that encourage us to watch this area. Amen? You with me so far? What is the purpose of that? Why is God encourages that? Why? Because he's saying, listen, this is an area where everybody is, has a vulnerability and everybody is weakened. So what you need to do, listen to me close now, if you want to experience, God is saying, if you want to experience my best, my best design, my best plan for the areas of sexuality and relationships and marriage for your life, then this is an area that you need to guard up, that you need to be careful, and that you need to set some boundaries in. Amen? Amen? They need to have some boundaries established in your life when it comes to romance, when it comes to love, when it comes to sexuality, when it comes to relationships. Okay? Now, again, what is our goal? Our goal is to experience God's best in the area of my relationships and sexuality. That's what I want. I want to see God's best. As a follower of Jesus, that should be my goal in every area of my life. I want to experience God's best. Amen? Amen? Now listen, see, you hear the word boundaries and you think, well, you're just trying to tell us what to do and what not to do. Listen, I, I'm not, this, this is not, this, you're hearing this wrong. Okay, this is not a, any way, shape, or form about me telling you, hey, you have to do this or you can't do this or you can do this and giving you a list of do's and don'ts. What this is, though, is saying, listen, if I want to experience God's best, I've got to recognize that there are some boundaries that I'm going to need establish in order to experience that. Amen? You can do, you're free to choose and do whatever the heck you want to do. You want, you want to push the envelope and live however you want to live? I'm not here to tell you you can't live that way or can't do that. I'm just here to tell you what the Word of God has said. If I want to experience His best, there are some boundaries, there are some parameters that I'm going to need to invoke in my life. Amen? And we, we know this is wisdom in every other area of our life. You know, listen, you cannot live a healthy lifestyle and eat cherry thingalings all year long. That's why they only sell them one time a year. Because if they sold them all year long, I'd be out there at 6 in the morning every day to get some. Okay? I know that I can't do that. I know I can't eat like that all the time. Just confession. I I've sinned this week with gluttony, this weekend, with them things. Lord have mercy. When my wife find out how much money I spent on, on them, she had a few words to say. I won't say the words here to protect your ears, but she has some words. No, she didn't go crazy, but she was like, you spent what? And I was like, yeah, well, you know, it's one time a year. What are you going to do? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how many I ate personally, but I'll tell you this. I bought three dozen from my household, from my family, and we have about a half a dozen left, okay? That was since Friday, so that's, you know, you know but I didn't eat them all. I ate, I ate my share for sure. <laughs> I can't eat however I want and be healthy. Amen? I can't do it. i got to have some boundaries in my diet. Amen? I can't show up to work whenever I feel like it and expect to have a job. I can't just do the job that I, I can't just do the stuff in my job that I want to do and expect to get a paycheck. I've got I've to operate within the parameters. I've got to have some boundaries. Come on, somebody. So we know that this is wisdom in every ever life. Why is it that so often that we don't apply that same principle to our relationships and our sexuality? In fact, we seem to want to go the opposite. We think, well, well, we should push the boundaries. We should, we should not have any limits. We should do whatever we want to do. And that would be a lie that the world often wants to tell us, that there is no limits. There is no boundaries. Just do, to, to fully find freedom in that, then you should just be fully free to experience and express yourself however you want to. The problem is, what we realized last week as we looked at this, true sexual freedom is not found is not found in pushing the boundaries to sexual freedom is found within a committed marriage that God has designed and created us to be in. Come on, somebody. Amen? Okay? So, so boundaries, listen, boundaries provide parameters so that, we can, so that we can experience God's best. In fact, let me see this. Boundaries, listen, serve to strengthen the areas where we find ourselves tempted. When I have a weak area in my life, I need to set up some boundaries around that so that I can be strong when temptation comes. And boundaries serve to do that. Amen? And so in our relationships, 
in our sexuality, in that part of our lives. Listen, we have got to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us about some boundaries. And so I want to talk just about a few boundaries that I think will really benefit all of us if our goal is to experience God's best design for our life. If my relationship, see, I know you hear relationship goals, and again, because of, because if, you, if you've ever seen this hashtag on Instagram, hashtag on Instagram or Twitter or social media or whatever else, you, we think relationship goals and we think, we think, well, I want somebody that looks this way or that treats me this way or that does this or does that or, you know, my relationship goal is to, is to walk down the beach at sunset holding hands with the person I love. And there's nothing wrong with any of those goals. But what I'm saying is God might have some even greater goals for us to really be looking at. Amen? So that we can experience those momentary earthly goals that we are putting so much is doing it. That is not the case. Everybody's not cheating on their wife. Everybody's not involved in all kinds of other relationships outside of their marriage. Everybody's not addicted to pornography. Everybody's not doing this and everybody's not doing that. Everybody is not doing it just because it looks like it, because the TV shows you watch doesn't make it true. Don't buy the lie, friend. Don't buy the lie. Amen? I never say, don't buy the lie. Married people, don't buy the lie that just because you got married, now your best sex is over. That's a lie. That's a lie. And we can make jokes. You can hear people crack jokes about it and comics talk about it and whatever. Listen to me. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Amen? Single people, don't buy the lie. That you have to give yourself up, you have to, that you have to give in to temptation, that you have to do this and you have to do that. And that's just the way. Don't buy that lie. That doesn't have to be, it's not true. It's just simply not true. Amen? Third boundary, the third, the third boundary helps us experience God's best is this. I have got to have accountability and honesty in the areas of my desire and my temptations. Amen? I've got to have accountability, and I've got to have honesty in the areas of where I'm tempted, tempted in the areas of my desire, okay? Again, when I refuse to expose the light to the light, I empower in the dark. I can't say that enough. What I refuse to expose to the light, I empower in the dark. If I have honesty about areas that I'm weak, if I have honesty and openness and accountability about things that tempt me and things I'm struggling with, guess what? I'm bringing that out to the light. And it doesn't give it the opportunity to be empowered any further in the dark. Amen? So I've got to have accountability when I'm tempted. I've got to have honesty when I'm tempted. Listen, if you're married, if you're married, listen to me. Listen to me real close. Don't miss this. If you're married, friend, husband, wife, listen, that person that you're honest with and accountable with, that is to be your spouse. Amen? That should be your spouse. Now, you might say, well, that's a talk, man. I just, we just, you know, we just, I just don't know if I can be the honest with my spouse. She, she might get mad at me. He might get mad at me if, I, if I'm open about an area of temptation, if I'm open about an area of desire. We just don't have, we just don't have that type of relationship. Okay, that's fine. Guess what you just said? You just found the area that you need to work on then. Amen? Because the goal of marriage of marriage is that the two have become one flesh we are together and i should be able to be open and honest about areas that i'm struggling with within that relationship and the beauty of marriage is that commitment should carry with it the idea that i can now be as open and honest with you more than i can be with anybody else because i know that you are committed to me and that i'm committed to you so you can share all your junk with me and i can share all my junk with you and we're going to hold hands and we're going to get through this together and if you don't have that type of relationship with your spouse, then guys, you need to have, then that's, the, that, that, that's something to work to. Amen? It shouldn't, be, it shouldn't be someone else. And listen, if it needs to be somebody else for right now because you're struggling and you need to, and you need to unburden or whatever, you need, you need to have accountability in your life, listen to me. That person better not be somebody of the opposite sex because you are setting yourself up for failure big time. Amen? It's just, this is going to be super practical, real world stuff here this morning, okay? That should be the place where I can be open and honest when I fail. My partner, my spouse should know areas that tempt me. Why? So, so that she can have my back and, and I know the areas that she's doing so I can have her back in those so that we can, so that we can do this thing together. 
Amen, somebody? Now, if you're single, if you're not married, who should that person be? It should probably be a trusted, it, really, it should be your parent. It should be a parent. That would be the ideal situation of parent, that you can say, hey, mom, dad, uh, I, this is an area I'm struggling with. I need you to pray with me. I need you to help me. I, and, and sometimes it's not that you need help. So listen to me. Again, what I refuse to expose to the light, I empower in the dark. You don't understand sometimes the freedom that comes from just owning some stuff that you're struggling with and getting it out there, gets it out of your head, out of your soul, puts it on the altar, puts it in somebody else's ears, and it's not on you for a while. It's amazing the kind of freedom that can come from that. Okay? But, but that should be apparent. That should be apparent. Now you may say, I understand that we live in a broken world and in a broken system that sometimes things don't work the way that maybe they should. So if that parent is not available to you or if you don't feel like you have that kind of relationship with a parent that you can be open and honest with like that, I understand that might be the case. Then listen, you need to find you, you need to have an accountability partner, someone that is probably a little older than you, a little wiser than you. It shouldn't be your best friend who's just struggling with all the same stuff you are. And you're, just feeding all the, you're just feeding off each other. That's going to be unhealthy real quick. Come on, somebody. So, so, so a youth leader, a youth pastor, a pastor, an, an elder, somebody in the church, ideally, preferably, that they, they you can begin to have a, a, a close. And listen, listen, again, single, guess what? This needs to be somebody of the same sex. Amen? Because, because again, it's an area of weakness. It's an area of vulnerability. And I, I, almost, I almost would guarantee you, and I, I haven't experienced this in my life, but, I, but, but I have, I've listened to other people's stories and other people's testimonies and heard them say, but listen, almost nobody just wakes up one day and says, you know what, I'm going to have an affair. Right. Right. That's, you know, I think ruining my family, my marriage, my home, bringing all kinds of misery and pain and getting divorced, that sounds like a good plan. No. It happened over time because there weren't boundaries in place. And when boundaries came against you, you decided, well, I'm okay. I can push through it. And, 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 and then you end, up in a, you end up in a mess. Okay? And so, and so if you think, well, well, it's not like that between us. I, you know, I'm single and she's a guy and she's a girl. And we're, just, we're just really good friends. And, yeah, we can share with each other. Man, she, she's my – listen, I'm telling you right now. I'm, t- I'm just – listen, maybe I'm just old school. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just, uh, maybe I'm just a Neanderthal. I don't know. I just find it I, – I just believe – that if a man and a woman spend enough time alone together, you're, something's probably going to happen. Yeah. May not tomorrow, maybe not next week, but I'm telling you right now, if a man and a woman spend enough time together and they begin to share their feelings and emotions with one another, guess what? You are setting yourself up for something stupid to happen along the way. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Why? It's a weak area. We're all weak in that area, and the enemy knows it. He's watched it happen time after time after time after time. Okay? So, so I need to have that accountability. I need, to shine, I need to have a place where I can let that light get shined on things instead of keeping them in the dark. Okay? I need to be honest. Fourth thing I need to do. I need to guard my eyes. I need to guard my eyes. Everybody say guard my eyes. Okay? Now this, this, this might be one of the most difficult tasks that we have, uh, or, or at least one of the things that because we do, again, is, is sexual sin and sexual perversion and struggling with this temptation, is it new? Absolutely not. Is our exposure and in in the ease of access which we have to that temptation, is that a little bit new and something that we're only dealing with over the last, really over the last 10 to 15 years? You know what I mean? I mean, again, back in the day, pornography has existed for a long time, but it used to get shipped to you in a brown paper sack, you know what I mean, that nobody knew what it was and then everybody knew what it was, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and it used to be cut. Now, now you have access to, to whatever kind of craziness you can think of in the pocket, in most of your pockets, through your phone. And so that is where we have to be careful, and that's where we have to be intentional about guarding our eyes. And this applies to married people and single people. Let me just, you may think, well, that's, that's too far, that's too crazy. Listen to me close. I have parental locks on my phone, okay? The same ones I have on my kid's phone. I, I, I disabled the ability for me without doing a couple extra. Now, listen, I know the passwords. I know what to do. I mean, I can do it if I really wanted to. And you say, well, what's the purpose of that? Here's the purpose. See, and, but I, I have set up my phone to where I cannot clear the browser history without going in and disabling the parental controls because I want that accountability in my life. I, I have limited access on my phone to websites and things like that. As enabled. Now, again, I know the password. Here's at least what it does for me. Okay, now if I really wanted to get crazy, I would give the password to some like Luann and wouldn't have it. The problem is there's sometimes that things get limited that I do 
that's not that's not pornographic. You understand what I'm saying? And so anyway, that's just here here to there. But here's what it does do. You know what it does? When I find myself in a weak moment of temptation and the enemy's putting thoughts on my head and, I, and, I'm, and I'm thinking, oh, should I look that up? Should I search that or whatever? Guess what? It means that I have another layer of defense that I have to intentionally go through to unlock. And it's one more chance for me to say no and let the Holy Spirit and his conviction speak to my heart. You understand what I'm saying? I want that boundary in my life. Amen? I think it'd be wise for everybody to have that. Listen, guard, to guard your eyes. To guard your eyes. Why? Because it's through my eyes that the enemy is going to bring temptation. Temptation comes as, he, as, as desires. Let's read this again. James chapter 1, verse 14. What does it say? Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. So I need to guard my eyes from things that I know are tempting to me. Amen? Amen? Listen, this is not just about pornography. This does not just apply to just looking up porn websites on your phone or, 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 or whatever else. Guess what? Hey, hey, you want to guard your eyes? Listen to me. Listen to me, married people especially. Listen to me. Guard your eyes. Stop clicking on social media photos just because you think someone looks good. Now, you might be tempted to go, oh, she's hot. Let me... And then, and then all of a sudden, here you are scrolling down an Instagram feed, down, 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 down a rabbit hole, and now your eyes are all over the place. Come on, somebody. Again, temptation isn't a sin. But Jesus, what did Jesus say? Jesus said if a man looks at another woman with lust in his heart, he's already committed adultery with her in his heart. Okay, so what does that look like? That means this. When I, 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 it's, when I see a picture or I see somebody, I can't help my, if my mind goes, oh, she's hot. Well, man, she looks good. Okay, that's, 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 you know, God saved me. He didn't blind me. Amen, somebody. (laughs) But the temptation is then to go, okay, she's hot. Let me click on that. Oh, that looks good. Let me check out all of her other pictures. Let me scroll through. And then you might end up with a real embarrassing situation where you accidentally hit. You ever had anybody hit like on a picture or a post of yours that was like two years old? (laughs) You're like, dude, stalker much? Seriously. (laughs) <laughs> okay so so then you're going down this rabbit hole and then all these are the thoughts are in your head and then and then a week goes by and then more thoughts are in your, you guard your eyes stop doing it amen well i can handle that i can check that out man we have a strong enough relationship i go strong with marriage okay fine you're you're the man you got listen you can do whatever you want i'm not t- i'm telling you but if i want to experience god's best i gotta have some boundaries amen I'm just going to give you some practical, some practical boundaries. Guard your eyes. Stop checking out your high school girlfriend's Facebook profile and seeing what she's up to. I, that cannot lead anywhere positive. Amen? Come on, somebody. It's just, 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 well, what's the big deal? The big deal is it begins to put thoughts in your head of, man, I wonder what life would have been like. Am I saying just because you had that thought or you had that daydream, that means you're going to go out and have an affair? No, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that you are, that you are willingly putting yourself in a position of vulnerability. Right. Why do it? Why do it? If I want God's best, I can. Amen? Amen, somebody? Now, listen, here I am. Listen, you know why I know all these boundaries? Because I've jacked all these boundaries up before in my life. Probably every one of them. I don't know, I'm going to go through the list. I'm not, I mean, I'm sure I've blown all these at some point. Okay? So I'm not sitting here saying, well, these are, this is what I'm doing to make some. No, I'm telling you, these are some boundaries I've realized in my life have, have, that I need in my life that are really helpful. Amen. Okay? So, so <laughs> the fifth thing you got to do, listen, guard your eyes. The fifth thing, guard your heart. Guard your heart. What does that mean? Guard your your heart. Just what the Bible said. And put that uh, Song of Solomon up there again. Or I'm sorry, Proverbs 4. Yeah, thank you. 23. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Listen, I cannot let my emotions and my mind and my heart run away from me, run away from me because the Bible also says that the heart is deceitful above all things. Amen? 
I'm actually going to dig, we're actually, after this series, in March, we're going to do a whole message series. We're going to dig into this whole idea of our heart, our feelings, how to overcome our feelings. Because here's the thing. Our feelings are not always reality. Just because I feel a certain way doesn't make it true. Amen, somebody? And so, and so, and so I've got to be smart when it comes to sexuality. I've got to be smart when it comes to my relationships. And I've got to recognize that my heart is vulnerable to feeling all sorts of things that might not be true. And my heart may be blinding me from the truth of who or what or that person or that relationship actually is. Because I feel so strongly about them. There's the, and that feeling makes me blind to all the garbage that's going on in their lives. Come on, somebody. And so i got to guard my heart. Guard my heart. For married folks, what's it mean? What would that mean to guard your heart? Listen, don't engage in close friendships of the opposite sex. Somebody that's not your spouse. Oh, you're saying we can't be friends with another woman? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you probably shouldn't be your best friend. You shouldn't have private jokes with one another. You shouldn't be texting each other all the time. It shouldn't be your best friend should be your wife or your husband. Amen? And if you need another close friend out of that, it needs to be a regular friend. Again, if you want God's best, if you want to leave yourself strong. Big red flag. This is probably an area I need to set up a boundary in. Amen, somebody. Because if I can't walk in light with it, if I can't walk in truth with it, if I can't be honest about it, come on, somebody. Well, I just can't be honest because, you know, my husband's a super jealous guy. My wife's super jealous. She'll freak out. She won't understand. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, all of those things may be true, and you may be completely right, and she may be, or he may be way out of line. But here's the thing. I made a vow to figure out how to love that person. And so if love to that person means that I need to limit my exposure to other people, if that speaks love to them, that's what I need to do. Well, I just think that's ridiculous. Okay, think it's ridiculous. Do whatever you want. I want God's best. Amen? Guard your heart. Single people, if you're not married yet, what does guarding your heart mean? It means this. It means don't let your heart run wild with the relationship that you really know deep down inside is not of God and is not something that you're committed to. Or are you saying I can't date? No, I'm not saying you can't date. But I'm saying maybe you shouldn't, maybe you shouldn't, maybe that person shouldn't be your everything for a year or so. Keep it, keep it friendly. I, I, don't, I use the word casual, not in a casual sexual way, but keep it casual. Amen? Until you know you're ready. Until you know they are ready. Until you sense, hey, God might be doing something here. Hey, this might be, this might be, this, this might be something that God has for my life. Okay, then, then we can explore that openly and with people that you trust and you can talk about those feelings with your parents and your and your leaders and other people but listen don't just go get sucked in amen what is it a sin i don't know if it's a sin but you'll certainly set yourself up for some sin probably down the road at the very least you'll set yourself up for a big giant fat heartbreak that you never had to go through if you would have just guarded your heart a little more amen somebody so he's saying, guard your heart. Guard your heart. It's deceitful above all things. Okay? Don't fall in love when marriage is so far down the road. And in so doing, and, and while I'm on the subject of guarding our heart, and I'm falling, not falling, well, I can't help who I fall in love with. Yes, you can. You don't very often because we let our hearts go crazy. But you can say, you know what, this isn't time, it's not time for this yet back it off. Amen, somebody? And while we're on the subject, listen, if you're single, listen, listen. Don't, don't, listen. <laughs> if you're just dating somebody, there's no reason for you to be in, in, in that bedroom all by yourself with the door closed. Or probably even with the door open, to be honest with you. Amen? Why? Why set yourself up for failure? Boundaries, pre-side. And you can insert bedroom, house, car in a dark parking lot, wherever. Guard yourself. Amen? Boy, y'all are getting quiet on me this morning. Is this, this is, this is, I know we're not shouting. I didn't think this would be a shouter. <laughs> but sometimes we just need to get reminded of some real practical wisdom, I think, sometimes. And just go, you know what? This is just some easy stuff to do. 
it's, it's not all, see, it's not, it's not all coming to the altar and crying and getting hands laid on. Sometimes there's just some practical wisdom that God says, hey, this is some areas to help your life. Come on, somebody. Amen? And I can come to the altar. I can come to the altar and pray till I'm blue in the face. I can pray and shout the paint off the walls. But if I go home and don't live with any discipline or any boundaries, I'll just keep coming to the altar praying and crying over the same thing over and over and over again. 6 thing. I'm not going to tell you how many I have. I know you're all faking it right now. How many more of these are there? <laughs> Why would you do that? Just for fun. This is the last one. And it goes along with guard your heart, guard your eyes, but I feel like it's appropriate for 2019. Guard your thumbs. What are you talking about? Guard your thumbs. Guard your thumbs. Amen? Listen. We live in a, we live in a, the world we live in today, marriages are being ruined through, through conversations that are happening completely digitally. Relationships and families are being destroyed without any physical interaction ever taking place between people. Okay, that's the world we live in. So I better, I, so as the world evolves and things are happening around me, I need to recognize, guess what? I might need to find some new boundaries. I might need to find some new boundaries to put in my life. And, and one of those would probably be guard your thumbs. Guard your thumbs. This goes back to guard your eyes. Listen, don't, don't, don't press on that. Don't hit like. Don't make that comment. Don't send that text. Don't send that picture. Again, if it's something that you have to hide, something you have to delete, something you have to purposely manipulate or deceive over, guess what? Probably something you don't need to be involved in. Amen? And I know you know this. I know when I say it, you're all like, yeah, duh. But when our heart gets involved and our emotions get involved and, we, and, and all of the logical things that we know go out the window. But listen, listen. When you send that text, when you send that pic, it's out there forever. There's no getting it back. None. I mean, you would think people are smart. I mean, you can't, every, every month, there's a new celebrity nude pic leak because somebody sent a pic to someone that they trusted. They thought, oh, they would never do anything with that. Guess what? <laughs> they did stuff with it. And you can't do nothing about it. Boy, it's quiet in here this morning. You are freaking me out. Like I, like I just kick down the door of somebody's living room and sit down on your couch and, you know, I'm looking over your phone or something. I don't know what's going on. Guard your thumbs, people. You used to, if you want God's best. If you want to experience God's best in your relationships. If you want to experience God's best in your sexuality. You want to experience the best that God designed those things to be in your life. Guard those things. Amen? Now, this is the last thing I want to say. Just because the goal gets difficult doesn't mean you should give in. Amen? <laughs> Again. You know why I can sit down and, and list it. We could, we could go on and on talking about other boundaries probably, but I think these are pretty good, all-encompassing. You know why these are easy to talk about and easy to come up with? For me, it's because it's all things that I've been tempted in in all areas that I know that I, need to, that I, that I have had to put boundaries in my life. Amen? And listen, listen. Even with all the boundaries in place, even with all of the things that you can do, even with all of the pre-decisions and all of the everything you can do, guess what? You'll still find this as an area that you will be tempted in. 
which is why I need to establish boundaries there even all the more so knowing that it's an area of weakness. Amen? Because even with all the, I can still, this is still an area that we are all vulnerable and all susceptible, that we can all be, and, and so listen, when I set those boundaries up, guaranteed, the, those areas will get tempted. Those areas will get pressed against. Those areas will get pushed and see if they're serious about those limits. Listen, just because that goal gets difficult, don't throw in the towel and give in. Amen? Okay? Let me, where are my Red Rover squad? Let me get you guys back up here. See, here's what happens with boundaries. Sit up, stand up like you were when I first set you up here. When I use wisdom and allow the Lord to talk to me and I surrender my conviction a little bit and I let the Lord convict my heart, <laughs> and hey, and when I stop being so worried about what I have a right to and what I don't have a right to, because that's really what so much of this boils down to. The kickback on this is, well, I have a right to express myself. Okay, you have a right to. And then you also will have a right to have your life all jacked up and to, be, and to go through therapy and wonder why you can't find anybody. I'm not, you laugh, it's not a joke. Wonder why your relationship is a wreck. And wonder why sex is boring and you don't like it anymore. Why? Because you didn't have no, because you wanted to do what you wanted to do. Do what you want to do. I'm saying, I want to find God's best. Okay? Now, these boundaries, listen, they're not going to get rid of the weak areas, but what we at least are going to do by setting up some boundaries, we will reposition these areas. Now, hold hands. We will reposition these areas, right? So that now, go ahead and hold hands with them like you're playing right over. All right? Now, I don't know. He's a big, scary guy. I don't want to hold his hand either. Now, I've at least positioned some places in my life. Where when the enemy does come in, I've now set up something next to it that I can, that I can have, have, a, have a fighting chance. Amen? And then when I surrender all these things to God and the Holy Spirit gets involved and God's presence gets involved, he'll show up in those areas where I'm weak. What did Paul say? When I'm weak, he is strong. Amen? This is what doing boundaries is going to reposition so I don't have a big glaring weakness where the enemy can just come in and destroy my life and destroy my relationship and destroy my marriage and make me such a broken person that, that, that it takes me years and years of counseling and therapy to ever feel like anybody else could ever love me or ever, anybody else could ever work. Listen, these are all the, the feelings of shame and guilt that when I get this area of my life wrong that the enemy brings into my life. And so we're going we're gonna to sure those areas up with some boundaries so that I can experience God's best. Amen? You guys sit down. Thank you. We stand in the middle of this room this morning.